Okay, we are now going to learn some basic probability techniques. These are just some different ideas and rules that go along with probability. So let me start out with a simple example. Let's say in a certain class I have, um, I don't know, we'll say uh, 18 traditional students. and we'll say uh, six non-traditional students. Okay, and then I'm going to randomly select a student. Out of the class. And now my my question is, what is the probability that that randomly selected student is a non-traditional student? Okay, so how would we go about finding this probability? Okay, so we first need to know the total number of outcomes in the experiment. Okay, and notice to find that, I need to actually add the 18 and the 6 together to get the total number of students in the class. And so that is actually 24. Okay, so now to find the probability that the student is non-traditional, the top number is going to be the number of non-traditional students in the class. So the top number is 6. So 6 over 24, that actually reduces down to 1 fourth and the probability is 0 0.25 25% chance that I would randomly select a non-traditional student okay so the point here is it's not always taking the small number and dividing it by the large number you gotta think about what's going on the bottom number is the total number of outcomes of the experiment the top number is the number of outcomes in the experiment contained in the event you want to find the probability of so let me do another example. Let's say that uh, we're told that a sample of households are asked how many TVs they own. Okay. And then let's say the results are given in a table. We'll say number of TVs and then number of households. And let's say the possible answers were 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, and then we'll say maybe one household had no TVs eight of them had one, twelve of them had two, five had three, three had four, none of them had five, and then we'll say one of them had six. Okay, and so this is the result of my, kind of my survey put into a table. Okay, and we're going to learn more about tables like this when we talk about statistics. This is actually a frequency distribution table where the frequency is how many households are in each of these categories. And we'll look at that more in a, in a future lesson. But let's say a household is randomly selected. And now we want to find, uh, find some probability. So I might ask, what's the probability that the household has two TVs. So now the question is, I need to I need to find this probability, so I got to start out by knowing how many outcomes there are in this experiment. So how would we go about doing this? So one way to think about this is kind of like you're drawing names out of a hat. So think of, ha, about having a big hat and then each household you write down their name, the Joneses, and then you can say they had three TV sets and you put it in a 
take that sheet of paper, fold it, put it in the hat. The Smiths had one TV set. The Thompsons had two TV sets. And you keep doing this with each household. The question is, how many names are in that hat, then? How would you go about finding that? Okay? So these are the number of households that fall in each of these categories. So to get the total number of outcomes in the experiment, you, ha you actually have to add up the number of households here. And so if I do that, there's 21, 29, 30. So there's 30 households total. And so that is my bottom number. That's the total number of outcomes of the experiment. And now I have to ask myself, out of those 30, how many of them had two TV sets? So what I got to do is I got to go back to the table. And for two TV sets, there were 12 households that had two TV sets. So this would be 12 out of 30. So 12 divided by 30. And I get 0 0.4. And so that would be the probability of two TV sets. So I could ask some other questions. What about five TVs? Okay. Again, the total number of outcomes is 30. And so now I have to ask myself, how many of the households had five TVs? So I've got to go through my table five. There were none of them, so zero out of 30. And so the probability is zero. So that's an impossible event. And that makes sense because none of the names in the hat would have five TVs, okay? Because there were no households with five TVs. So this event would be impossible. So I might also ask something like, what's the probability that the number of TVs is greater than or equal to 3? So this is another type of problem you could ask. So I could say, out of the 30 households, how many were greater than or equal to 3? So I would be adding the number of TVs for 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that would be 8, 9. Nine of these households, it would be these added together. Nine of the households, nine out of the 30 households, had th great uh, number of TVs greater than or equal to 3. And that is 0 0.3 in this case. Okay, so that's just uh, a couple uh, situations where finding the probabilities is maybe a little more involved than, than what we did before. So now let's talk about some other things. Okay, I want to talk about and, maybe I'll get another sheet of paper here. I want to talk about and and or probabilities here. And, um, and or probabilities. And I'll just do an example here. So let's say I have a question that wants to know, I'm going to randomly draw a card from a deck, and I want to know what's the probability that the card is a heart um, and a jack. Okay? And then I have a second probability, and it wants to know what's the probability that it is a heart or a jack. Okay, and these are two different probabilities, okay? And so this first one means when I draw the card out of the deck, that card has to be, at the same time, that one card has to be both a heart and a jack. It has to be both of those. So out of the 52 cards, how many are a heart and a jack? Well, there is only one card. One out of 52 cards would be a heart and a jack. Okay? Well, what about a heart or a jack. Okay, so now what this means is that card, when I draw it out, it doesn't have to be both. It doesn't have to be a heart and a jack. 
If it is a heart, then that would work. If it is a jack, it would work. The event occurs in either one of those cases. If it's the jack of hearts, it would work. Okay, so out of the 52, here's how I do this. Out of the 52 here, um, there's 13 hearts and there's 4 jacks. But I don't just add these two together and get 17 because one of these jacks is already in one of these 13 heart cards. The jack of hearts is here and here. So really I take the 13 and add 3 more and I would get 16 out of 52. Okay? And so that would be the probability there. So 1 divided by 52 is 0 0.01926 16 out of 52 is 0 0.3077. Okay? Let me do one more example using the playing cards here. What if I had, um, uh, we'll say a heart and a face card. And then what's, what if I say a heart or a face card? Okay, well let's look at these. Uh, again, the bottom number is just 52. There's 52 cards in the deck. Now in this case, when I draw that card, that card has to be both a heart and it has to be a face card. Okay, so now how many cards in the deck can be both of those at the same time? Okay, and the answer would be three. Okay, because the card would have to be either the jack of hearts the Queen of Hearts or the King of Hearts, okay? Those are the only three cards that are both a heart and a face card. So that would be three out of 52, okay? Now what about heart or a face card? Okay, so now this card, when I draw it out, if it's a heart, the event occurs. If it's a face card, the event occurs. If it's both a heart and a face card, the event occurs. The point here is it doesn't have to be both. It only has to be one of the two. So what I would do is I would put the number here, 13 hearts. There's actually 12 face cards. There's three face cards for each of the four suits. So there's 12 face cards. Now again, I wouldn't just add these two numbers and put 25 here, okay? And the reason is because three of these face cards are already counted over here in these 13 hearts. The jack, queen, king of hearts are one are included in these. So really, there's the 13 hearts, and then there's nine other face cards. So 13 and 9 would be 22. Okay, so 22 out of 52. Okay, so 3 divided by 52 would be 0 0.0577. And 22 over 52 is... 0.4231 when I round to four decimal places. So those are AND and OR probabilities. Now as it turns out, this is related to unions and intersections. So if you remember, AND was the intersection, right? And then um, OR was the union. And you don't have to worry about this. You don't need to 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 um to know this, but I'm just showing you that there is a relationship between what we learned with sets and the patterns in sets and probability. They go hand in hand. But the point here is the heart, those that's a set of thirteen, this is a set of four, and the and is the intersection of those two, and there was one card, Jack of Hearts, in the intersection. Here it, the the or probability is the union of those two sets. And when you union them, there's a jack in both, and a jack of hearts in both, and you only include it once. Okay? And so then you got a 16 cards in the union. Again, this is the intersection of the heart cards and face cards. There's three cards in the intersection. This is the union of the heart cards and the face cards. And there's 22 cards in the union. Okay? 
So it's actually related to what we did in sets. So it's kind of neat. So any of those relationships, De Morgan's Law, any of the sort of things that we learn about unions and intersections of sets actually come into play and they become their own rules when you're doing probability. Kind of cool stuff. Um, let me show an, uh, you another thing that can occur. Let's say um, a card is drawn and you're told it is a number card. So you know that it's a number card and you want to find the probability that it is a 10 and you could write given that it is a number card. And the idea here is if you're told that it's a number card, someone draws it out and you're told it's a number card, it now means the bottom number is um, uh, now 40, right? The bottom number, because there's 40 number cards. And out of those 40 cards, how many are tens? Four are tens. And so now the probability is 0 0.1 here. Okay, so if you're told something about the event so that you can then shrink that sample space down, that's going to change the probability, okay? And that idea is known as conditional probabilities, and you have a section on this. So there's actually sections in your book, that, and I won't write these down, but this there's a section on and and or probabilities, there's a section on conditional probabilities and what I did is I just threw it out real basic ideas I'm not making a big deal out of this I'm just wanting to expose you to some of these techniques okay there's one more rule that is really important here one of the basic techniques and it comes into play in a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of different things and this is called the complement rule and this is the last thing I'm gonna show you here Okay, so what is the complement rule? Well, two events are said to be complementary. Let me give you some examples. Complementary events. If, when you perform the experiment, okay, one or the other has to occur. Okay, so it could be, you know, um, an odd number or an even number right like when you roll the dice or a number card or a face card okay um, it could be a traditional student or a non traditional and the point is these are splitting the sample space up into two complementary events um, it has to be one or the other. When you perform the experiment, one or the other has to occur. So maybe another example might be, let's say you produce a part. Um, when you produce a part, either the part is defective or it works. Right? When it comes off the line, it's either defective or it works. But those are the only two outcomes. Those are complementary events. Um, let me do one more example. Let's say you're exposed to a disease, right? You're either going to catch the disease or not catch it, right? Catch disease or not catch disease. But those are the two possible outcomes. You catch it or you don't. It's defective or it works. They're a traditional student or a non-traditional. It's a number card or a face card. It's an odd number or an even number, okay? complementary events and when you perform the experiment one or the other has to occur okay and the reason this is important is if you know one event you automatically know the other event you if you know I'm sorry if you know the probability of one of the events you automatically know the probability of the other event okay and just for the sake of the rule here we would call one event E and then the other event we would call not E. And it doesn't matter which one is which. 
If E is catching the disease, not E would be not catching it. Or if E is defective, then not defective would be that it works. If E is traditional, not E would be non-traditional. But let's say E was non-traditional, then not E would be traditional. Not non-traditional would be traditional, right? Or not, if E was works, then not E would be defective. Or if E was not catching the disease, not E would be catching it. Not not catching it would be catching it. So it doesn't matter which one you call E, which one you call not E, okay? Just for the sake of the rule here, um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll write it up here. The complement rule just says, if you know one of these events, you know the other. So the probability of not E is just equal to 1 minus the probability of E. Okay? And they have that relationship. So let me give you an example. Let's say, um, let's say the probability that a part is defective, okay? The probability that it's defective, we'll say, it's pretty small. We'll say uh, 0, 1, 3, Eight or something like that. Very small probability. So the probability that it works is just equal to 1 minus the probability that it's defective. Okay, if you know one, you know the other because you can just subtract from 1. So 1 minus 0 0.0138 is 0.98 nine oops, point nine eight six two so this would be the probability good chance it's small chance it's defective very good chance that it works okay so another example might be the probability of um, catching a disease let's say is uh, we'll say point uh, one five something like that then the probability of not catching the disease would be 1 minus 0.15. And that would be 0.85, right? So one way you can think about this is kind of if there's a 15% chance you would catch a disease, there's an 85% chance you would not catch it, right? They add up to 100%. But what we're doing is we're doing it in terms of decimals instead of percentages. Okay, so basically the complement rule says if you know one probability, then you know the complement by taking the one you know, subtracting it from one. And that's known as the complement rule. Okay, so in the next video we're going to um, look at how you can find probabilities when you're rolling two dice.